This is the Viking Model E deluge valve. Uh, this particular uh, deluge valve is similar to the Model F. Uh, it's only a 90 degree uh, angle to it, right? So it's sometimes referred to as the angle uh, style valve. Now this one is halar coated, which gives it corrosion resistance. Uh, it comes in a standard red finish, but the, when, it's look, when it's black in color, it's uh, corrosion resistance when we're referring to the Model E and the Model F series deluge valves. Uh, this valve too uh, uses the corrosion resistance trim, which is stainless steel. Uh, and it comes with a corrosion resistant pressure operated relief valve as well. Now that corrosion resistant uh, pressure operated relief valve is the model D4 uh, compared to the standard uh, D3 pressure operated relief valve. But uh, overall, uh, the system operates just like the Model F. It just gives us that, that 90 degree uh, feel to it um, and gives us that, that angle style valve. So how we trip this valve, uh, in this case we're using a pull station to activate uh, the system itself. Now it's a deluge valve being used in a deluge system. So this pull station or manual release could be a heat detector, smoke detector, flame detection, uh, could be a number of different initiating devices. But in this case, we're using uh, just a simple pull station. So we're going to pull the pull station. We're going to send a signal to the VFR 400. The VFR 400 is going to open the normally closed solenoid. That normally closed solenoid is going to relieve the water in the prime chamber that holds the valve in a closed position. And the water supply will push through the valve up into the system piping. Let's give it a look. So with the system trip, the first thing we're going to do to shut the system down is to close the water supply valve. We're going to close the water supply valve here. Uh, in this case, it's a butterfly valve located just below the Model E. As we close that valve, we're going to get a signal to the VFR 400, which is our supervisory signal to tell us that the valve is being closed. So we're going to close that valve. We're going to get the water supply shut off. and we're going to silence the VFR 400. Now with the VFR 400 silenced, we're going to open any system main drain that we might have on the right side of the valve. We're going to go ahead and open our flow test connection. And we're going to go ahead and open our auxiliary drain, which is uh, communicating directly to our outlet chamber of the valve itself. So to restore the system for service, we're going to start with making sure that our initiating device has been reestablished. Now in this case, we're using a, a manual pull station connected to the VFR 400. Again, it could be a heat detector or a smoke detector, um, a flame detection, whatever the case may be. So we're going to need to make sure that we get that squared away first. So we're going to reset this manual pull station here. We got the manual pull station reset, so now we've taken care of the initiating device in the field. And then we're going to go ahead and reset the VFR 400. Now in this scenario, the normally closed solenoid has been powered open by the VFR 400. Now we're going to hit the reset button, which is going to reestablish uh, the original position of the solenoid here, which is normally closed. When we do that, our prime water pressure is going to uh, almost instantly come back up and close the valve or put the valve in the closed position. Now it's going to do that because we never closed the prime water valve that's located in the back. We left the prime water valve in the open position. And for the most part, that valve can be left open almost all the time. Now, if we have to have the riser shut down for a considerable amount of time, we may want to close that valve so that we don't uh, send water to drain uh, for an extended period of time. But just doing a, a trip of the valve itself, we can leave that prime water valve in the open position. So with that valve in the open position, here's our prime water pressure. We're going to go ahead and hit the restore, reset button. We're going to get our prime pressure uh, almost instantly back on into the trim network, which is going to close our valve here. And we'll get a supervisory signal that comes back, which is a good thing, because that's telling us that our water supply valve is still in the closed position. So at this point, we're going to uh, partially close our flow test connection. We're going to close our auxiliary drain that communicates directly to the outlet chamber. We would close the system main drain if that's installed. And then we're going to go ahead and get our, our water supply back on or get our city water back on. So as we open the valve here in the front of the riser, we're going to get some water moving. And as we get some water flowing, we're going to take the flow test connection and we're going to close that. And as we close that, 
we get our water supply pressure back up, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, open our system control valve here to get our water supply back on fully. And once that valve is in the open position, we're going to go ahead and clear out our VFR 400 by hitting the reset button. And uh, we should have no signals that come back to the panel itself. We have our initiating device reset, which allowed us to close the solenoid. We got our valve in the open position, which allowed us to clear the supervisory condition for the valve itself. Now the deluge valve, the electric release deluge valve, is completely restored. Now with a PS10 flow switch, pressure type water flow switch, we can test that PS10 water flow switch using um, the alarm test valve, which is located right here in the trim. Now, this valve here is the alarm isolation valve. If I were to close this, that would prevent this uh, PS10 switch from functioning. So if we'd like, we can take this valve out of the picture and connect the PS10 right to the trim piping here, which would make it an uninterruptible location. So uh, if we do have this valve, though, we want to make sure that this valve is in the fully open position so that we can test our PS10 switch, right? So on the front of the trim in this particular model, this is going to be our alarm test. As I open that valve, I'm going to send water pressure over to the PS10 switch. I'm going to get my water flow alarm here on the panel itself. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and close this valve. Now when we close this valve, our water pressure is going to drain off through our alarm check, which our alarm check is essentially a check valve with a tiny hole in it. And you'll note on the top it has a red sticker that says drain check. So that pressure is going to bleed back through the drain check valve. And once that pressure has been bled off, I can reset the system here. And our VFR 400 should completely clear.